It's the world's largest democracy, but equality has never been a part of it. For many Indians, putting food on the table is a big enough struggle. Many others are being smothered by their own waste. But there's another need that seems so basic, you can't imagine not taking it for granted. This is a story about a group of people who call themselves sanitation warriors. They've saved thousands of lives over the years and given hope to a downtrodden people known as the untouchables. By any measure, Renu Ujinwal has a job that's desperate and disgusting. It's so bad, no one except her family wants to go near her. She can't even go to the temple at her home in the state of Rajasthan. She's shunned in public places. In India's caste system, she's known as an untouchable because of her job collecting sewage from households with no toilets. Renu empties it into a common drain. The waste becomes the problem of someone else. These are the people who are supposed to be the lowest of the low. They feel very low mentally and morally. And over the years, they start believing that they themselves are actually low because they are told day in and day out that they are not meant to do these things which the other people are meant to do. Renu married at 13 and followed the footsteps of her mother and grandmother collecting the so-called night soil. She fears her own children are destined for the same role in life. It's staggering that in a country of one billion people, 80% don't have a toilet. And most in cities and towns aren't connected to a sewerage system anyway. That's 800 million people going in the open, in rivers, under bridges, anywhere they might hope to get some privacy. This shocking state of sanitation explains alarming rates of sickness here. Each year, 40,000 children under the age of five die from diarrhoea alone. And these are the people wanting to save them, the so-called hygiene missionaries of the Sulab sanitation movement. The New Delhi-based charity is driven by religious-like zeal and an objective that one day every Indian should have a toilet. It's not that this is a poor man's problem. In many places, people have the money to build houses, but they do not think it necessary to create a toilet or to construct a toilet. So Sulab builds toilets for them. Since the 1970s, the organization has constructed more than two million of them across India on its crusade to change habits and save lives. At this crowded neighborhood in southern New Delhi, a community of 2,000 people can head to the toilet for the first time. It's the only communal building they have. But this is more than a public lavatory. As Sulab's doctor PK Jha shows me, no waste is wasted. That liquid is treated through a simple technology. In a parched city, the toilet produces water for household gardens. And finally, it turns into this form. This liquid is free from any pathogen, any color, any odor. Perhaps not too remarkable, but there's more. 
Methane is also collected from the toilet facility and pumped to nearby homes. It's a free source of cooking gas and saves householders like Suresh Devi the expense of having to buy gas cylinders. It was the nation's founding father who identified sanitation as India's greatest challenge. As a gesture of humility, Mahatma Gandhi himself even tried his hand at emptying household buckets. Gandhi had said two things. First thing, he is the first person in this world who had said that toilets are temples. And then he also emphasized that cleanliness is next to godliness. Parwan Kumar Jha takes it seriously too. As curator of Sulab's Toilet Museum, he's a world expert on the heritage of the water closet. In same England, if you go to there, they call it Lou. If you go to USA, they call it John. In Australia or New Zealand, it is Dunny. The collection catalogues toilet evolution from the 17th century. This piece is the seat of power for King Louis XIV. It is said that while he is sitting in his throne and talking to his courtiers, discussing very important state subjects, if he has suddenly the call of nature, in presence of all, he lifts it and does it. The serious message is that this basic human need can't be catered for in India. Most people don't even have access to a simple hole in the ground. And after the human excretor flows from the sea to pits. Sulab's popular twin pit system costs just a few dollars to build. There are two pits. When one hole is filled, it's left to compost to garden fertilizer while the other side is used. The day you give a clean toilet to a lady, she will never go on the road to do this thing. In the suburbs of New Delhi, Sulab's Dr. S. Nath conducts sanitation workshops. Most of these women dropped out of school because they couldn't bear the indignity of having to go to the toilet in the open. They're often unruly affairs. Mothers are drawn on the promise of free medical help in the centre while their children, too, are taught about basic hygiene. Women comprise 95% of the sewage collectors of India, but their role in the family makes them crucial to the Sulab experience. If one man is trained, only one person is trained. If one woman is trained, whole family is trained. So we lay more importance on training and educating women. And these are the women who've had their lives completely turned around. They've been lifted from the gutter. In Sulab speak, they are liberated women. Three years back, they were carrying human excreta as head loads. So self-grooming, building up the self-confidence, teaching them how to read and write, apart from the vocational training, is an integral part of what we're doing. Now the women have skills that have enabled them to break free from their jobs as toilet carriers, they're trained as beauticians and makeup artists. Other untouchables also have a new income. They come together to make pickles and papadams to sell to the local community. Uh, 
And the most important thing that we uh, wish to achieve through this is to make them feel independent, self-reliant um, financially, and for them to feel confidence in themselves that they are as good as anybody else. For liberated untouchable Rani Athwal, it's been a life-changing experience. तो हमको अच्छा लगता था कि भाई अपने सफाई से आते हैं नहा धोकर के आते हैं और अच्छे मतलब कमरे में बैठते हैं अच्छी छाया में रहते हैं तो फिर अच्छा लगने लगा हमको बहुत फिर उनको तो जरूरत ही नहीं रहेगी जब सारे जगह पक्के बन जाएंगे तो ऐसे गंदे काम की रानी टेक्स अस बैक इनटू द नेबरहुड एंड टू द हाउस वेयर शी यूज्ड टू वर्क शी एक्सप्लेन्ड व्हाट वाज हर डेली रूटीन फेचिंग द सीवेज लेफ्ट टू द साइड ऑफ द हाउस झाड़ के टोकरा में रखते थे Rani can move on thanks to her new skills, but also because of some renovations by her old boss, the addition of a toilet. This is a country talked about as a future world superpower. It has a burgeoning middle class and business people becoming billionaires out of information technology. India has the bomb, satellites, and wants to send spacecraft to the moon. Can you see a time in India when most people have access to a toilet? I would love to see it, but I do not know whether I'll be alive to see that. It's a simple enough idea. If you build enough toilets, you improve the health of a nation. You also eradicate the need for the untouchables of India to clean up after others. And in doing that, you return some dignity to a people who for generations have been outcasts of this society.